speed. High revving engines. And beautiful, timeless designs. Supercars are high performance cars that demand a ton of attention, but they don't always have to be expensive. So that's why your boy Brad Danger here came up with six affordable supercars and an honorable mention, baby. That you only have to pick up a couple extra shifts here and there to be able to afford because they're all under 50,000 bucks. This one is gonna be a good one, ladies and gents. Let's go. Before we get started, uh, leave a comment down below. Let, let me know about this uh, this hair. Should I keep it? Should I shave it? Should I man bun it? Let me know. All right, don't deny it. Everyone loves Porsches. Even your girlfriend that doesn't give a shit about cars appreciates Porsche 911s. And she has good taste in cars, not, not you, because the Porsche 911 is, dare I say, the ideal sports car. And just slap a couple of turbos on that bad boy, and you got a supercar. Now, the ones that are cheap are the 996s. Is it because their headlights suck? That's up for debate. But luckily, their turbo motors suffer from my hair's getting in my eye. I should do something about this. Their turbo motors suffer from none of the catastrophic motor issues that the regular 996 does. And with 415 horsepower and the same amount of torque on tap, these things hang with pretty much anything on the road today. But just how cheap can you get one of these to impress your girlfriend? Oh, wait, why would you have to impress your girlfriend? How cheap can you get one of these? Okay, so here we got an ad for a 2002 Porsche 911 Turbo. They all were all wheel drive. And this bad boy is under 30 grand at 29.9. Now, these cars came with both the Tiptronic and the six speed manual. You usually wanna get it in a six speed. This one's a five speed auto with 127,000 miles. That doesn't scare me, but it definitely is a higher mileage car. How does the car look? Of course, it's silver, like almost every other 996, 911 I've ever seen. And it's got the turbo twist wheels. And, ooh, let's see those headlights. Bam! Okay, now are there any stories on this thing? As a clean Carfax, that's always good. No accidents reported. You still want to make sure and do your due diligence that uh, there wasn't any accidents, even though there weren't any reported on the Carfax. It's got the 3.6 liter turbocharged engine, and it is silver like every other one. Um, not a bad car. Definitely a great value, especially for under $30,000. Now it would only be fitting to have the next car on the list be a direct competitor of the Porsche 911. And that is the Aston Martin Vantage. This car is both powerful and elegant and was designed by the legendary Henrik Fisker, who designed this extremely interesting hybrid car, which is uh, absolutely stunning. But so is the Vantage, which is more of a GT car than a sports car, but is kind of the perfect all around supercar to drive to work pick up groceries, and just have a ball in. Yeah, it's definitely not one of the fastest cars on this list, but boy oh boy does it have a ton of personality. And for 33 grand, I can't think of a better looking car. I mean, you straight up look like James Bond in this bad boy. Now, this one looks like it's in pretty good condition. It has the six speed manual transmission, which is very nice. Let's see what kind of stories are here. Less than 20 miles to the gallon on the highway. And uh, yeah, they're not gonna give us much on this car. It's just kind of a canned description. But overall, I mean, I don't think for 33 or less thousand dollars, you can get a car with much more curb appeal than that. If you can, let me know down in the comments. <laughs> this list wouldn't be complete with some good old American muscle. And that's why you gotta include an eight liter V10 monster called the Dodge Viper. <laughs> Viper. The Viper definitely has a pretty wild reputation, but it beautifully blends muscle car heritage with sports car handling. And that, ladies and gentlemen, creates a supercar. That's been known to bite a few humans in the ass once or twice, maybe me. And the reason they get that reputation is that, well, they don't have the nannies that most supercars do. ABS, traction control, even airbags are kind of optional. Well, they're not optional, but they're, well, they are optional. The airbags, but they just didn't, well, yeah, they're, they're pretty much optional. They came later than they should have, I guess. I mean, literally, the Gen 1 had nothing. No airbags, ABS, no traction control, and uh, 
It was probably the coolest car I've ever driven halfway across the country, which I did like a couple weeks ago. So if you want a little safer model, the Gen 2 came with anti-lock brakes, which sort of helps. But either way, whatever you choose, they are all so badass. I personally like the Gen 1s. They didn't come with door handles, windows, or even a roof. So how much does all this badassery cost? Like I was saying, the Gen 1s don't come with any nannies, and that's what's kind of appealing about them. Um, you kind of have to respect them, obviously, and their looks, I think, are to die for. It's definitely subjective, though. Uh, if you're going to get a Viper, though, definitely get one in red. And this one here is just about perfect. You got the three spool, very 90s wheels, red RT10. And as you can see, no door handles, no windows, no roof. Now this one's priced at 29 grand. So under 30 grand, you get a eight liter V10 motor that when we did our road trip, got almost 22, 23 miles to the gallon on the highway. And you get 400 horsepower out of that eight liter. Most of them have low miles because well, they're Vipers and you don't drive them all year round. And look at this zero to 60 in just 4.2 seconds and a top speed of 165, though I think they go a little bit higher. Now, this thing can pretty much hang with everything today in both speed and curb appeal, that's for sure. When on our road trip, almost everybody wanted to either sit in it, touch it, talk about it. Maybe it was just me, but great cars. 93 Dodge Viper RT10 for under 29,000 bucks. That's an ideal car. Now, before I spoil what the next car on the list is, you might wanna go check out the cars that depreciate faster than a ton of bricks falling off of the largest cliff that you've ever seen. Because if you were to buy the Maserati Gran Turismo new, you would have lost over $100,000 in the first five years of ownership. Yeesh. Now this car, just like the second car on the list, the Vantage, was to rival the Porsche 911. But Maseratis aren't the most reliable and they had a bunch of recalls on the electronics, the transmission, and the gearbox but there's just no denying how beautiful that exterior is. Even if the mouth kind of looks like a catfish. And what's awesome about this supercar is it has four seats, which makes it fun for you, and you have room for three other friends. And that motor puts out some heavenly sounds. Just listen to this. <laughs> Gives me just the shivers. Now, that sound can be had for way less than you think. Let's check out how much. Here we go, a 2008 Maserati Gran Turismo Coupe for 22.9, the same price as that RT10 Viper. Now, this is a very European color combination. We got the beautiful blue on the outside with some saddle interior. Wow, that is, well, you either love it or hate it. Now. This car has almost 70,000 miles on it. It's got the V8, which they all do, which sounds glorious. And let's see if there's a story on this bad boy. Nope, we got nothing on it. So here you see, you get a 2008. It's a 10-ish year old supercar with under 70,000 miles on it for under $23,000. Now, if you were to buy this new, you would be crying in your pillow right now because, uh, well, or your back seat, because <laughs> this thing uh, depreciates faster than any other car that I know of. So yeah, it looks good, but looks can be deceiving. Lotus builds some pretty awesome cars, and both the Elise and Exige are pretty ideal. But their bigger brother, the more spacious and comfortable Lotus, is the Evora. And what's synonymous with every Lotus that I've ever driven? This thing has telepathic handling, and both the brake pedal feel and steering is magnificent as well. Now the Evora will get you looks everywhere that you go. Lotus as a brand just isn't that well known. And so people will come up to you all the time asking, what car is that? And yeah, it doesn't have the blistering acceleration of some supercars, but it definitely gets supercar attention. So the million dollar question, how much can you get one of these for? Boom, a 2010 Lotus Evora Coupe 2 plus two, which will definitely help your insurance. You can pick one up for under 41 thousand bucks now these things are pretty sweet they got the v6 this one has under 30,000 miles it's a manual transmission and these things are just best british cars that you can buy if, if that's really even a thing because british cars are well never mind but yeah this 2010 lotus evora it's kind of the the bigger badder version of both the elise and exige um and man they literally will carve up pretty much any mountain road 
or canyon that you throw at it and just, I mean, look how beautiful that is. Did you guys know what the Lotus Evora was before I mentioned this? I mean, <laughs> it is pretty much saying, let's get an interior shot. Look at that. Look at those buckets. They'll just hold on to you forever. This thing is pretty much a little race car. Definitely impressive. Oh, and I almost forgot before we get to the last car on this list that's, well, affectionately known as Godzilla. It's time, it's time for that honorable mention. Okay, that was probably one of the cringiest things that I've ever done, but this car is not cringe. The Ferrari F355, baby. And the reason it's the honorable mention is because Ferraris just throughout the years are pure perfection. That is until you have to start maintaining one. And the F355 is pretty much the perfect combination of handling power in a classic supercar. And over the years, there were three models of it. The Berlinetta, the GTS, and the Spider. And if you wanna snag one of these cars or any of the other ones on this list, go check out the Ideal Car Strategies. Because just like your ex-girlfriend that was really good looking, they're usually pretty high maintenance as well. Well. And the F355 needs engine out pretty much everything every few years. So how much can you get one of these ultra classic Ferraris that have precise handling and awesome performance? So how much can you get one for? Well, here is your answer. Here's the 1999 Ferrari 355 GTS for 54,999. Now, that is over 50,000 bucks, and this car, I mean, that is classic Ferrari there. Look at that V8. Uh, but I think that you could get this thing under 50 grand if you minus the wing. <laughs> no, but seriously, you can see here that it actually hit a low point of 49,999. They actually brought it up a little bit. But here's the thing, it's been on CarGurus for over 1187 days. That's like, my math's horrible, like almost four years. So with that, you might have a little negotiation leverage here. It has 37,000 miles. It runs and drives beautifully, has a clean Carfax, clean title, tons of records. But for some reason or another, it just hasn't sold. So you can go in there and say, hey guys, I'm gonna take this off your hand yellow Ferrari, maybe get rid of that wing. And uh, yeah, you'll be able to just absolutely kill the competition in this Ferrari. Now, again, maintenance is gonna cost you pretty much this every few years. So uh, that's kind of a joke. Um, so yeah, you just wanna keep that on uh, the back of your mind while you rip this thing through, uh, well, just through the decades. No, while you rip it, just rip it. <laughs> I am so stoked that you're still here because just wait until you see how cheap you can pick up an R35 GTR today. The GTR, as we all know, has a cult following and has been going after the 911 Turbo, well, pretty much forever, it seems like. And by far, this car is the easiest car on this list to drive fast, like really fast. It's the car that makes you a way better driver. And dare I say, it's probably the best daily driver supercar on this list as well. Yeah, the early models had some transmission issues, but overall, they've been pretty much bulletproof. I mean, after all, they're a Nissan. And before we get into how cheap you can pick up this supercar, let me know down in the comments, which car did I miss or which one on this list would you pick up using the ideal car strategies? Would it be an R8 or something? Kind of missed that one. All right, let's get into the pricing. Oh baby, we got an 09 Nissan GTR premium for under $40,000. Now, before you click off this video, guys, there is a story with this car. Now, as you can see here, there's 75,000 miles. It's an automatic, which they all were. All wheel drive, which is awesome for four wheel burnouts as well as any snow driving. But as you can see, it's a clear title, no accident GTR. But then here is the story. It's got the Alpha 6 package on it and some other performance enhancements. So of course with these GTRs, they're a tuner, hero's wet dream, but at the same time, most of them have been modified and so you just have to be very careful about what has been done and what complications come from those modifications and also who installed them and so on and so forth. Bam, there you have it. Now, if you wanna check out the five cheapest sports cars that are complete money pits, go check it out or check out what YouTube recommends you watch next. Oh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe, but either way, you can't lose and as always, keep living that ideal lifestyle. <laughs>